So, evolve. <clears throat> Cybercrime is up. Everyone knows this. And three days ago, this came out. Cybercrime has surpassed illegal drug trafficking as a criminal money maker. One in five will become a victim. The threats have evolved. They're less platform centric now. They don't really care if you're running when Microsoft has actually done a really good job securing their operating system. So they don't mind that you're running Vista or XP or whatnot. Their their attacks are platform are not platform centric. And that the actual the cyber crime er, no, the chart is from SANS. How many here visit SANS.org? It's a good resource for security. They released a few days ago their top cybersecurity risks for the first half of the year. And these are some of the things that they mentioned. The attacks are now on applications. So Microsoft Office, all the your apps, that is what is getting targeted. Also, your browser is getting targeted. If you use IE, you use uh, Firefox and whatnot. That, that's where most of the attacks are coming from now. No longer are hackers going after, if they're going after your corporate network, usually you have NIDS, IDS, HIDS, IPS, bunch of security on there. So what are they attacking? Your web applications because you have poor AD open. So, oh lost my brother, you know that, you know that is true. Um, and lastly, they're attacking your users. Uh, that is the weakest link and will forever be the weakest link as more operating systems get more secure and more secure and more secure The user is going to be the weakest link. So How do you solve that? Staying current Follow the news see what's going on and train your users. This is the most important thing a lot of people you get New employees come in you don't train them on your systems. You don't train them on security. There's security awareness training that you could conduct, even browsing security training, you know, teach them how to really browse and what not to click and what not. Although it might sound simple, some users really, they just click whatever they see. And this is very evident in the residential market that most computers you see that are residential have some form of malware. And it's just because people click without ever getting proper training. And lastly, Windows training. You're moving from a Vista, from an XP to a Windows 7. It's a new operating system. You want to train your users on how to use it, not only for security reasons, but how to be more efficient. Windows 7 spent, Microsoft spent a lot of time getting, putting a lot of things that make you quicker, more productive, more efficient. So you want to, you, even though you might know this, you want to let your users know this so they become more efficient. So quick recap, if you're running Windows now, you will eventually be running Windows 7 unless you plan to go to Vista, which it's not very recommended. Um, so you need to plan accordingly and secure it. Educate your users. Use BitLocker or some sort of full disk encryption. TrueCrypt is a free one. You know, encrypt your flash drives, encrypt your removal media, and encrypt your, your laptops. Even, some people even go as far as encrypting their server hard disk because you lose this and how much company data do you really have on here? It's important and they'll, they'll keep you a little more secure. Patch everything that goes without saying. Don't just do Windows updates, but also Adobe Flash. That's one of the big ones lately. Or Office products or Sun Java or all that needs to be patched. Most organizations have a patching an SMS server or some sort of third party patching platform. And that's definitely something you need to do because every day, zero days come out, and patches come out for them, and you want to stay secure. You still have to use an anti malware. Uh, killed that word. Use anti malware, um, antivirus, anti spy, where depending on the user, the more educated the user, the more leverage you can give, but it goes back to educating the user. I like Firefox, I recommend using Firefox, and there are two add-ons that you can use. NoScript, anyone use NoScript? Good stuff. It, basically, you have to let, if you go to a website, AOL.com, and it has ads from other places, it won't, it won't run them. You'll have to manually go and say, allow uh, ads.com or double click or whatever. And Web of Trust, WOT, is a site reputation. Um, it's a website for site reputation. 
So basically, as you go through links, there's a little logo next to every link. Red means the site is probably bad. Green means the site is trusted. Yellow means it hasn't been verified. It's pretty cool and you know small things that at least let you know where to click. How many people here actually go and run Internet Explorer web browsers in a sandbox environment? No, yeah, okay. Yeah, some people, some of the paranoid ones. We have a VM just for web browsing. That every day we just go back to the snapshot, just because. It's very, e it's a lot easier than reformatting your your machine or going through a trouble. So even you know with the XP machine, you, you can do snapshots with virtual PC. You could do snapshots, create a base system, take a snapshot, use it all day for web browsing. At the end of the day, revert to your snapshot. You're not going to lose anything unless your temporary internet files are important to you. And it allows you to be more secure. Right now, everything's coming through the web. As you saw, Windows 7 is a lot. It's a lot more secure, and that's the way they're going to attack. They're going to go through the web or social engineering in some way. George, which uh, any malware do you like? Um, on my system, I don't run any, but once, whenever I do, I get a call from a buddy. I run uh, malware bytes, anti-malware. Have you heard of it? It's not. It does. It's not active, but you run it whenever you want. It's probably the best one. Uh, there are other ones like AVG is a free one that's pretty good. But nowadays, like you get some sort of malware, and unless you're interested in actually taking the malware apart and figuring it out, you're gonna end up formatting, like he said, just because they're installing everywhere, like scareware, <coughs> scareware. And you and you still have stuff all over the place because as soon as one installs, you're gonna get a bunch of others. And scareware lately is the big one, and that's why you need to train your users. Is it, scareware is. Uh, a website that says, you know, I'm scanning your computer, you have a virus, click here to remove it. And a user will go and click it, and they will willingly install an antivirus that is not a good antivirus, it's a rogue antivirus. They'll install it, and then they'll say, hey, pay for it to work. And then they go out, they give their credit card, next thing you know, identity theft, a bunch of stuff. All because you didn't train your users, or you didn't know what you were clicking. And I actually saw a case of that today. So... Going back to Windows 7, carefully plan migrating from XP to 7. It's, it's going to be a big jump, but it's going to have to be made eventually. Not like Vista, but... And train your users, like I said. Security awareness, browser using, and Windows 7 training um, are all uh, some good stuff. Uh, here's my information. I... You can email me, I'm pretty good about emailing back. I have a blog on orchidias.com. I tweet mostly about IT. Both of these are IT and IT security. I'm not going to tell you I had cheer reels. All right, folks, we need a wild round of applause on tape now. Well done, George.